Hey everyone, welcome back. So today's episode is going to be packed with everything that you need to know about intermittent fasting and keto. So whether you're new to it or you're looking to optimize your routine, hopefully there's something in here that will be helpful for you. We are going to cover the science behind fasting and ketosis, how your body actually burns fat, the benefits of it, things like better energy, clearer thinking, improves metabolic health, and then even potential cancer fighting effects, which of course is really important for me. Also, we'll talk about how to start fasting and doing keto the right way so that you don't get the keto flu and don't get frustrated and quit. We'll also talk about electrolytes, MCT oil. We'll talk about ways to measure your ketones and your glucose and how you can calculate this index to figure out if you're in the right zone. We'll also talk about meal plans, grocery items, so you know what to buy, what to cook, and I'll give you some examples of what I actually eat in a day. All right, so hopefully all of this will be helpful for you, so let's get into it. Okay, let's start with the science behind intermittent fasting. The first thing I want to say is that it's not a diet. It's about when you eat, not necessarily what you eat. The most common fasting schedules that you'll hear of They're broken down in a 24-hour period. So you'll hear things like 16 and 8, 18 and 6. What that means is that if it's 16 and 8, that means that you fast for 16 hours and then you eat in an 8-hour window. 18 and 6 means that you are fasting for 18 hours and eating in a 6-hour window. You'll also hear of longer periods like 20 and 4, 21 and 3, or even OMAD, which is one meal a day, which is essentially a 24-hour fast with one big meal during a one-hour period. So when you fast, your body burns through stored glycogen. Glycogen is sugar that is in your muscles and in your liver. Once your body burns through that stored glucose or glycogen, it switches over to fat-burning mode, which is ketosis. So what is ketosis? Ketosis is a state where your body burns fat for energy instead of sugar. Your liver ends up producing ketones, which acts as this super efficient fuel source compared to glucose. You can actually measure your ketone levels, just like you can measure your glucose levels, through either a urine strip or a blood strip. I use this meter called the Keto Mojo Meter. You can actually buy this off of Amazon. It's a small little device that measures both your ketones and your glucose, and so you can track your progress and how you're doing. That device actually calculates the GKI for you, which is the glucose ketone index. And it's a way essentially to measure how deep you are in ketosis. So it calculates your glucose by your ketone levels. There's a conversion in there. I try to have my GKI around 2.0, which is like a deep therapeutic ketosis level. And that's ideal for metabolic health, especially if you have cancer. That's at least the theory that I'm going with. And then just to give a little bit deeper understanding of the GKI numbers, if you're interested, if your GKI is above, let's say, 9, that means you're not in ketosis. If it's between 6 and 9, that's light ketosis. Between 3 and 6 is moderate. And between 1 and 3 is like deep ketosis for healing and for metabolic benefits. So if you want to track ketosis beyond just urine strips, a keto mojo meter is, I think, 100% worth it. So I want to talk a little bit about why intermittent fasting is important as part of cancer management and why I'm particularly doing it. So fasting triggers autophagy, which is your body's way of recycling old and damaged cells, cancer cells, for example. Then there's this concept of apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. Basically, your body's killing off malfunctioning or potentially harmful cells. So together, these processes reduce inflammation, remove cancerous or precancerous cells, improve immune function, and longevity. So when you're in a fasted state, your body is better equipped to get rid of old cells and recycle and renew. Okay, let's switch a little bit and talk about MCT oils. If you've heard of ketosis, you've probably heard of MCT oils or bulletproof coffee. MCT basically means medium chain triglyceride. It's one of the best keto tools because it converts 
directly into ketones for instant brain and energy fuel. So bulletproof coffee, some people put butter or ghee into their coffee. Another way to do it is to put MCT oil into your coffee. But I will say one thing to be really careful about MCT oil is that you have to start slow. Taking too much of it too fast can cause major stomach issues, gas, bloating, diarrhea, cramps, all of it. So I think the right way to start it is start with a really small amount. Start with about a teaspoon, put it in your coffee or cold brew or iced coffee, and then slowly increase it to a tablespoon over a few days. It's a really small amount, but it makes a big difference. And I've experienced a lot of GI issues, like really bad stomach cramps with MCT oil. So I definitely want to warn you that go slowly and build up to it. There's different types of MCT oils. I would say go with C8 or C10 and avoid blends that use palm oil. That's actually going to further cause inflammation and you don't want that. So when you're doing intermittent fasting and keto, you have to be really watchful over your electrolyte levels and I'll explain to you why that's important. So when you start keto, your body flushes out water and electrolytes which is why you might feel what they call the keto flu, which is like headaches, fatigue, muscle cramps, stomach cramps. So to prevent this, you really need to up the amount of electrolytes that you are consuming. Now, this is what I've looked up. Please do your own research, but I do want to let you know the amount of electrolytes I'm consuming in a day. So for sodium, I try to get in 4,000 to 6,000 milligrams per day. For potassium, I'm aiming for 3,500 to 4,700 per day milligrams. And for magnesium, 400 to 600 milligrams per day. Now, you can try to get these through diet. Um, I have found that very difficult. So I do take electrolyte packets and I put them in my water. My personal water goals are three liters of water per day. And I put in electrolytes into that throughout the day. I always try to get electrolytes that are unflavored and don't have any added sugars. Just make sure you check the labels and see which ones you want to get. Okay, let's talk about keto food a little bit. So when you think of keto, keto is basically high fat, moderate protein, and low carb. Those are the three tenets of a keto diet. I think when people think of keto, they think of bacon, hot dogs, like super saturated high fat foods. But there's a way to do keto, which is not that. It's called clean keto. And then also keto doesn't mean that you have to eat a lot of meat. I actually don't consume a ton of meat on keto. I do eat animal protein, but it's not ridiculous amounts that you might think of. There's definitely possible ways to eat plant forward and plant heavy on keto, you want to just make sure you're focusing on the right things. I think one thing that's really helped me is that instead of thinking of keto as this elimination of carbohydrates, I try to just think of it as added good fats. So try to reframe it to where you're not thinking about what you can't eat, but think about what you can eat. So when you think of healthy fats, think of things like avocados, olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, nuts, ghee. When you think of proteins on keto, think of things like chicken thighs or chicken drumsticks, wild salmon, grass-fed beef, pasture-raised eggs. And then when you think of vegetables, think of ones that are low in carbs, things like spinach, kale, zucchini, cauliflower. Also, I think fermented foods are great on keto, kimchi, sauerkraut, Um, And then make sure that you are incorporating those electrolytes that we talked about. So I think if it's helpful, let me walk you through what a typical day on keto intermittent fasting for me looks like. Uh, For a while, I had been doing a 21 and 3 schedule, 21 hours not eating or fasting, and then three hours of an eating window. I have now changed that to a 16 and 8. So let me walk you through a 16 and 8 because I think that's more common and more sustainable to do. So I'll start off in the morning waking up having cold brew coffee with a tablespoon of MCT oil. Now remember, if you're starting out, start with a teaspoon, move up to a tablespoon. And then in the morning, I will drink probably a liter of electrolyte water. So I'll add in the salt, magnesium, potassium to that. 
My first meal is usually around noon, and that'll be some form of eggs. So it'll either be hard-boiled eggs or two to three eggs scrambled. If I scramble them, I'll add in avocado oil, spinach, mushrooms, and make it a little omelet scrambled situation. I also at that time will have half an avocado and I'll add some sea salt to that. If I'm still hungry, I'll grab a handful of nuts, almonds, macadamia nuts, something just hold me over until dinner. And then dinner will be around 6 p.m. I'll have a protein, chicken drumsticks, chicken thighs, wild caught salmon, and then a side of vegetables. So Brussels sprouts, broccoli, and I'll cook all of that with avocado oil. And I'm usually pretty generous about how much oil I use. I'll also do a lot of cauliflower rice if I'm making something with that's more saucy or has like a curry base to it, then I'll use that as my, you know, quote unquote rice. So that's around 6 p.m. And then after dinner around 7, I will have a big handful of nuts. The ones that I always include are Brazil nuts. They're high in selenium, walnuts, almonds, macadamia nuts, pecans, And I will have a small amount of cashews. Cashews are higher in carbs. So you just have to be careful not to have too many of them. That's a typical day of what I consume. So one liter of water in the morning, another couple of liters of water throughout the day, and then healthy fats, moderate amount of protein, low carbs, and then the vegetables I eat, I try to just eat lower carb vegetables. So I would say that's a typical day. I do think I'm going to start including back into my routine a smoothie or a juice. I think when I first started keto, I was trying to really minimize the amount of carbs I was having. And now that I think I'm in a more maintenance mode of keto, I do think I could add some vegetables back in. So I'm planning on having a green juice with my breakfast going forward. Okay, so that's your full beginner to moderately advanced guide to intermittent fasting and keto. If this has helped you, please DM me on Instagram at Bismillology. Let's chat about it. And if you like this episode, don't forget to subscribe, share, and leave a review. It really helps. See you guys next week. Thanks for listening to The Other C Word, hosted by Bismillology. New episodes drop Mondays. Connect with me on socials at Bismillology, and let's all learn, grow, and inspire each other.